Finding the build for your champion is always kind of a hassle. What streamer can help you out? What database can give you exactly what you need? My name is Kirks and to avoid this in the future we thought of something to help you out and make Pro Guides your one-stop source for everything leak. For today we are going to take a look at 5 OP builds from the Chinese super server. We have looked at the highest levels of play and selected one build for each role in this new format. If you like this, we can add some more in the next iteration or go a little bit deeper into the reasons why those super server players build and play as they do. First on this list, we are going to start with the top lane and here we have the One Punch Man set. For your starter setup, you want the Doran's Blade, a health pot and warding trinket. As you walk towards the lane or even beforehand, try to mentally assess the matchup you're in. If you determine that you're allowed to play aggressively, then you should take position either the middle bush or the one closest to the enemy tower. With that done, you're now waiting to allocate a skill point. Given the opportunity, you may put it into your E ability and threaten heavy traits to zone the enemy of melee creep XP range. Second wind and your passive will make sure that you'll sustain through that without any problem. Unfortunately though, you will lose lasted gold from up to 3 melee minions, but it's all about the XP in the top lane. Let's talk about your first recall. Your first ideal base consists of plated steel caps. Sounds a bit weird since they're not granting you offensive stats in an obvious way, but they're providing you with the ability to close the gap, stick to the target and reduce incoming auto attack damage. Your buff nature and chunky HP bar will then take care of the rest as you'll beat them down. Following, I'll quickly list you the full setup for your one punch top laner and afterwards I'll briefly talk about why you want those items. Plated steel caps, gore drinker, Kempunk chainsaw, titanic hydra, black cleaver and anathema's chains. For runes, it's conqueror, triumph, legend alacrity, last stance, second wind and unflinching. Take one attack speed chart, one adaptive and one for health. Gore Drinker will provide you with high stats, extra damage and sustain. Given your champion's nature, you'll want to go in, and by going in I mean right into the heart of the enemy team. You'll be surrounded by quite a few champions who will instantly stack your grid to empower your Haybaker. In an instant after, you'll do some juicy extra damage with the items active and heal for quite an amount. Champang Chainsaw, or situationally just the executioner's calling, is to deal with the insane amount of healing champions have with their Divine Sundra or other healing mechanics. Titanic Hydra will add some reach to your punch and increase the grit to empower Haymaker even more, which is your champion's theme. Go in, be tanky and burst any squishy champion you can see because, well, they hit you first. Afterwards, you'll finish up your build with a Black Cleaver for ability ace and extra damage and Anathema's Chains. Those chains will be put on the most dangerous enemy member that has the highest amount of consistent DPS. Next in line is Blue Cane for the jungle roll and in the super server they are quite aggressive and that shows in their builds. For their starter item, they go for the Gust Walking Hatchling, a Health Pot and a Warding Trinket. Their ideal first reset consists of an Iron Spike Whip and if they happen to be a little bit lucky, they can get a Tear of the Goddess too. Some of them even buy a Serrated Dirk and sit on the item until the very end of the game without building it into anything before their very last item. You might be asking about the idea behind that. It's about early stats that synergize with their runes. For items, we have a Gore Drinker, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Mana Immune, Guardian Angel, Cyril the Scrudge and then they finally upgrade their Serrated Dirk. Since the selection is quite broad and every item fills a different spot, I'll just offer you alternatives here that will allow you to accommodate for every situation. Umbral Glaive for better vision control, Yomus Ghost Blade for slightly stronger map presence, Edge of Night to avoid certain death by specific spells or Serpent's Fang to deal with annoying shielding. By playing Kane this way, you've signed up for a snowbally ride and for runes you'll go all in into the same department. First Strike, Magical Footwear, Futures Market, Cosmic Insight, Sudden Impact and Ingenious Hunter. You pair them with two Adaptive and one Health Shard. For those of you who are wondering why you'd go for Gordrinker over Prowler's Claw and Blue Cane, it's the added tankiness at the cost though of Prowler's utility and damage amplification. They really like to fist fight and if you're down for that, you'll surely not regret this purchase. After this, it's more of a cookie cutter approach as Manimune is your go-to item for every blue cane. High amounts of ability haste, some added sturdiness and sustain with the power of snowballing for first strikes added bonus damage create the very core of this build. To protect that, you'll then be glad to have a guardian angel and especially one of its components, the stopwatch. We all know that giving away shutdowns blows, so we want to make it really hard for the enemy team to cash in. For our next build, we have a special one. It looks like an abomination on paper at first glance for a seasoned player, but bear with me. 
It's for Trinity Mid and Top and it features Hullbreaker. With the changes in the meta, Trinity Mains have been changing it up and got a little bit creative. For them the days of Kraken or Gale Force every game are over, but this is all about becoming an ability haze based, high HP and high DPS bruiser. For your starter, especially when you're in the mid lane, you'll be in desperate need of the Doran shield to out sustain pretty much anyone you're facing. As for your first ideal base, you really want to get that Tiamat. This item will enable your pushing potential to then invade the enemy jungle or rotate to potential place. The first item will also enhance this idea strongly, but let's take a look at the full setup first. It's a Ravenous Hydra, Hullbreaker, Boots of Lucidity, Cerulus Grudge, Spear of Shojin, and Stridebreaker. For runes it's Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Second Wind and Revitalize with 1 attack speed, 1 adaptive and 1 health shard. With the Ravenous Hydra you'll get Sustain, Wave Clear and Haste to consume all waves and camps you can spot and you can push that CS score upwards the 9.0 mark with absolute ease. Adding a Hullbreaker to your build will make it especially difficult for ability based champions to deal with you while simultaneously enabling your split push. You're basically living in the enemy jungle anyway, so the extra stats can't really hurt in a 1v2 scenario. Since you cannot get enough haste, you'll add Boots of Lucidity to the mix, as they are a really powerful combat boot when your champion is primarily cooldown reliant. Following that theme again, we are adding in Cyrilda's Grudge for Pan and Ability Haste and Spear of Shojin to make ourselves even more tanky, while also providing us with more movement speed and, well, you guessed it right, more Ability Haste. For our last item, we'll finally think of a mythic, and here we have options that are kind of open. But Stridebreaker to control the fight is a valid option you can go for. Usually, you would see Trindemir go full damage and prioritize crit, attack speed, and overall DPS. That way, they get maximum value from their ultimate, but outside of their ultimate ability, they are literally unable to join coordinated fights. With this build, however, that's a thing of the past. For the AD carries, we have a gem. A certain Chinese Azrael player has been dominating the super server with his Azrael and we checked him out to provide you with this setup. Not too long ago, it was kind of an established thing that most Azrael players would default to Prowler's Claw and Essence Reaver. But this guy does something completely different. But we'll get to that part a little bit later. For your starter, you want to go Doran's Blade with a Health Pod and a Warding Trinket. Your most ideal first reset as an Azrael consists of a Tea of the Goddess and the Sheen. With those, you'll be able to stack up your tier quite early and pack a punch during the laning phase with Sheen's Spellblade passive. Abusing this theme of poking the enemy out and then going for the kill is something that is mandatory for Azrael players. Many players also believe that Azrael doesn't have much early game presence, but this is mostly linked to ability or inability to punish the enemy's movement during your laning phase. To do this properly, you have to understand the enemy's intent. Every AD carry craves the last hits. As a minion is about to enter the last hit threshold, you can posture in a way that will allow you to punish the enemy's alt attack on minions. Repeating this multiple times can set up a pretty easy lethal depending on your and their skill. If you want more of this advice in far more detail, you're more than welcome to check out our coaching services or courses over at progats.com. Competent high elo coaches will guide you through every step of the way in your climb. Catch you there. Now back to Ezreal. For your items, you want Trinity Force, Mana Mune, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Cyrilda Scrudge, Ravenous Hydra and Guardian Angel. In the rune department, it's the following. Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, Coup de Gras, Mana Flow Band and Transcendence with 1 attack speed, 1 adaptive and 1 health shard. Prior to this, you'd have infinite mana with Essence Reaver and even more utility with the Prowler's Claw. But this Ezreal build is all about sturdiness and consistent DPS throughout skirmishes. Being able to consistently keep your Trinity Force fully stacked will add a lot of extra damage to your fights, and especially make it easier to take down towers. Important to mention here is that pre-stacking it on a tower before a fight can also be a major factor that you should try to keep in mind, even though it might not happen all the time. Afterwards, Cyril does grudge for more haste and pen, with the Ravenous Hydra giving your build added AoE while poking. If you're struggling with this build though, you can default to the old build and swap out the Trinity Force for a Prowler's Claw and add an Essence Reaver to your build. Last but not least, we are in the support department now and here we have Pike for you. As a well-established playmaker, he has been terrorizing the Rift for quite some time and we have got just the right build for you. For your start, you want Steel Shoulder Guards, two health potions and a sweeping lens. Following your champion's snowbally theme, you want to invest into early movement speed as fast as possible. Therefore, your ideal first recall are either Boots of Mobility or Ionian Boots of Lucidity. 
Mobility boots are strictly meant to accelerate the game, whereas ability haste boots help you go for more consecutive plays. The sweeping lens is utilized to gain footing in the lane and use bushes to apply pressure. As a support, and in this case Pike not being seen on the map is an immediate threat. The enemy now has to use the minion wave as an invisible wall to block potential hooks, which will lead them into spots they can get ganked from more easily. Additionally, they also don't really know if you're still in lane, remember? As soon as you purchase those boots or even before, you might be anywhere. And information is key, and especially for support players. The full setup is going to look like this. Steel Shoulder Guards, Boots of Mobility or Lucidity, Prowler's Claw, Yomu's Ghost Blade, Edge of Night and Death Stance. Alternatively, you can swap out one of your lethality items for another better game-fitting lethality item. Important to mention here though is that your inventory usually requires at least one open slot for control wards to find space in. As you reach an unrealistic length of a game, you might also add just a watchful wardstone to your build, so you're set up for the worst case. For runes, you go Hail of Blades, A Taste of Blood, a Zombie Ward and Relentless Hunter with Second Wind and Unflinching with two Adaptive and either an Armor or a Magic Resist Chart. In this build, Prowler's Claw will add some utility and playmaking potential to your champion which will make it borderline impossible for the enemy team to react. The other items you have in your build are most of the time just serving a specific purpose. Ghostblade helps you reach places faster or escape from deadly threats, whereas Edge of Night opens up more possibilities when it comes to facing certain crowd control. Needlessly to say, since your champion has a reset mechanic on his ultimate ability, Death Stance can come in clutch many times. And that wraps up our new format of the Chinese Super Server builds and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and see you soon for more Pro Guides League of Legends content.